Okay, so the plan today, myth and archetype, talking about Lilith. Um, I'm going to differentiate them. And if you're familiar with Lilith Healing the Wild, uh, my book, which I think a bunch of you probably are, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of condensing a lot into a short time, but, but that kind of separating out myth versus archetype is very important. And then we're going to do an overview of the black moon, uh, the true black moon astrology and explain a couple details to you to make sure you, you get the, the context, the connection between certain details about its astronomy and how we, and how I interpret it in terms of astrology in your chart. And then your Lilith charts, your, your charts and Lilith stories. So that's, that's the plan for today. Okay, so let's just start off with this question. Why is Lilith important? Of course, preaching to the choir, you guys don't. Okay, well, but the idea is we've been trained to live in our heads. Uh, and we expect everything in our lives to yield to logic. And this is the blossoming, you know, the f coming to fruition of the intentions of the patriarchy, uh, which is a, the, a system of it's basically a philosophical system that gets about social control and social organization that's been around for about 6,000 years. Um, uh, we can kind of tie it to the beginning of, you know, the first monotheistic, um, you know, Abrahamic religion, Judaism. Uh, but it's, it's in all three of the Abrahamic religions, uh, Christianity and also uh, Islam. Um, but this, uh, and then, of course, the rest of the world, too, by extension, just because it's it's kind of spilled everywhere. Uh, but this is really uh, the story about Lilith is really the story of the patriarchy, the myth of the patriarchy. And when I, if you guys have heard um, Dina DeCastro's interview with me on Lilith years ago, um, I don't know, 2009, 2010, um, she said, after I told her the story, she said, that sounds like the myth of the patriarchy. And I was like, that's actually, that's actually very appropriate. Um, so the patriarchy is about ensuring property can be handed down through male lines. I have a typo here, not lives, through male lines. So essentially, a man, and the patriarchal thing is all about a man must know for certain who his children are. And if you think about just biology, um, when people, when people uh, come together and there's procreation, well, the dude leaves. The woman could be with somebody else. How does he know that she hasn't? That's the core of the patriarchy. And so attempts to shape, direct, and control, the, they begin with women's sexuality. That is the whole thing here. That's the whole basis here. But it extends to everything in our lives. Okay. Um. When I say patriarchy, some people are like, oh, man, he's a conspiracy theorist or whatever. I, I talk about it quite a lot, especially in terms of the Lilla thing, because um, we each have a balance within ourselves as individuals. We each have masculine and feminine energy. Masculine is about doing and feminine is about feeling, experiencing, uh, sensing. Um, masculine energy is about thinking. So when you think and you plan something, that's your masculine side. And when you sit and look out the window and hear that bird, that's your feminine side. Uh, we have all these judgments that have come up because of this imbalance in patriarchy about masculine, feminine, and you know we're all trying to come out of this and heal it. But the core of it is about elevating the masculine so that sexuality can be controlled to procreation so that power, the handing down of power can be controlled. That's what it's all about. What we're dealing with day to day, you know, um, uh, equal rights issues, equal pay issues, um, sexual violence. We're dealing with all these little things and because of the imbalance. But what it comes down to is, yeah, a system was developed, a philosophy was developed to try to control so a man can know who his kids are. That's what it's all about. So the enlightenment as a step back. I, I thought about this when I was like, going over the presentation right before class and I didn't edit it, but the idea is like a step away from who we really are, like a step back from progress. We, we think of the enlightenment as total progress. You know, if everything is about the mind and logic, the rest of the organism suffers. Organism here is used for, to indicate an individual as well as a collective. 
but we love our logic. We can't get enough of our logic, the mind control, you know, trying to get everything to fit within a certain little box. Actually, I just really briefly, when I was in um, uh, Austin, Texas, a couple weeks ago for a body, mind, spirit expo, had my little table and all my crystals out, my stones out. And um, they're energetic programmed and I'm explaining to people, this guy comes up and he has some kind of like t-shirt that's like a, a riff on the periodic table. So I know he's, you know, a sciencey nerdy dork kind of guy. Um, and he's very in his head. He's totally in his head. And he says to me, how, like, what is the proof that this, that crystals work? And I said, it's not about proof. It's about the experience of it, but you would have to be willing to be in your body. We had this like 10 minute conversation where he just, wasn't buying it because his brain was not open to it. And I said, he said, how can you believe in it? He said, I don't believe in it. And I said, I don't believe in it either. And he said, what do you mean? You, be, you, be, you obviously believe in it. And I said, no, I use it as a tool. It's real. I don't believe in it. Anyway, I had this whole thing about that. And I, I honestly, I wish I'd recorded it, but that would have been weird to record everybody at the expo, but you never know, you know, who I'm going to run into. And I said, what are you doing here? Why are you even here? And he said, families in from out of town, they wanted to come, they're at a talk, I'm wandering around. I was like, well, that makes sense. He ended up buying a stone, uh, one of these um, um, dendritic opals, not because of what it felt like, because he was visually attracted to it. I was like, well, hold it in your hand and close your eyes and be willing to, he couldn't do it. Anyway, we love our logic. We love our logic. And the linear logical mind has essentially been on a multi-thousand years, multi-millennial feeding frenzy and control binge <laughs> escalating over these thousands of years. And that's the state, you know, you can, you can look at all kinds of things in our lives and realize that it's, it's a result of the linear logical mind having essentially, you know, done everything it can to eat everything on every buffet, like going crazy, this binge of trying to absorb data and control things. So Lilith's myth. Now this is from the Jewish tradition, but it's not in the Bible or the Torah. Uh, it had to be edited out so people would.